Hello. Uh, so let's take a, a quick uh, look at the voltage amplifier model uh, to sort of remember uh, how it operates. And a voltage amplifier can be modeled using a, our block diagram notation as a voltage dependent voltage source uh, whose voltage output value is equal to A, which is a gain factor, times V in, which represents an input voltage signal. Um, normally, uh, we also include in our model the input resistance are I and the output resistance are out. And the reason why we do that is so that we can take into account the effects um, of this voltage amplifier being connected to a source at the input, uh, a signal source, as well as a load at the output and what kind of loading effects those are going to have uh, on the overall performance of the amplifier. So we can represent a signal source, a voltage signal source via its Thevenin equivalent, meaning a, a voltage source in series with a resistance. And so I'm going to refer to this as uh, Vs, the signal source. Um, and then at the output, I'm going to connect um, a load, which I am also representing via uh, a model. I'm modeling it as a resistor, um, basically the input resistance of whatever I'm connecting there at the output. That will be represented by RL. And so even though as a first order approximation, um, we had said the output voltage of the amplifier is equal to the gain times the input voltage, the voltage applied at the input, um, we can now see that there's going to be some, um, some uh, interference between RL and R out, um, a voltage divider there. And so not all of the output voltage is going to be uh, sent out to the load resistance RL, but some of it is going to drop across R out, right? And how much of it drops, drops across R out is going to be represented via the, um, uh, the voltage divider equation or the output loading factor. And it's going to be, again, the result of voltage division between R out and RL, so RL divided by R out plus RL. And now this gives me a representation of the output voltage in terms of V in, which is the voltage applied at the input terminal of the um, amplifier. But if I wanted to calculate the gain um, as the ratio of the output voltage versus the input signal that I'm applying at my source, then I also need to take into account the effects of the loading at the input. And therefore, I will have to say um, V out is equal to R in divided by R s plus R in times the gain times the output loading factor times the signal source. Um, and therefore, I'm going to label this as my input loading factor. And my output loading factor. Uh, now, ideally, uh, those loading factors are equal to one. So ideally, loading factors are equal to one. So the output is equal to the gain times V sub S. Um, in all reality, this is only true uh, whenever the condition is met that uh, the load resistance is much greater than the output resistance or vice versa, the output resistance is much smaller than the load, and that the load, um, the um, input resistance is much greater than the source resistance. And so as a designer, when we're designing a voltage amplifier, we're going to try to, if we have knowledge of what our load or source resistances are, or what range they may be into, uh, we should be able to design an amplifier that has adequate values of input and output resistances to keep our loading factors above a certain value. Um, so for example, let's consider a practical example um, with values in which RS, let's say, is 2.5 kilo ohms, R in is 5 kilo ohms, R out is 100 ohms, the load is 300 kilo ohms, 
and the nominal gain is 200. Okay. Um, let's imagine my, my signal source, my value of input signal is 30 millivolts in amplitude. And what will be my um, output signal? Well, in this example, uh, my V out is going to be equal to the loading factor for the input is going to be 5K divided by 2.5K plus 5K times the nominal gain, which is 200, times the output loading factor, which is 300K divided by 100 plus 300K uh, times V sub S, which is 30 millivolts. So now if my loading factors were uh, both equal to 1 or close to 1, I will expect my output voltage to be something close to um, 200 times 30 millivolts or something close to 6 volts. <clears throat> in all reality, we can see that um, in the case of the output loading factor, uh, because the, uh, the load resistance is so much larger, uh, it's several orders of magnitude larger than the output resistance of the op-amp, this is actually approximately equal to 1. But my input loading factor, my input resistance and my source resistance are comparable. And if I make the calculation, it's actually my input loading factor is equal to 0.6. And so that is going to, uh, to drop my output voltage from the expected value of 6 volts uh, quite substantially. And so I'm going to have my V out being equal to 0.6 times 200 uh, times 1 times 30 millivolts, which ends up being 3.6 volts. Um, and so in essence, again, as a, a circuit designer, if I wanted to somehow fix this amplifier, you know, why is it, its gain so much uh, different from the nominal gain of 200, uh, my plan of attack will be uh, to try to tackle that input resistance, try to increase that input resistance so it is no longer in the range of RS, so that my input loading factor, uh, which is currently dragging my gain down, uh, will be approximately equal to 1. Thank you.